Now it's time to actually build something using Editable Poly. Um, we're going to build something fairly complex. We're actually going to build this fish model. Here's the final version of it. So this is going to take a lot of steps. Now, because Editable Poly doesn't allow you to use a stack, we're probably going to be saving a lot. And I would imagine if you ever use uh, Editable Poly to save early and save often, that way you have a lot of revisions and you can always go back. Because you don't have the stack to uh, kind of protect yourself, you do need to uh, keep things on, on the disk. So how are we going to model this fish? Well, we're going to open a file. In fact, if you look at, at this, I've actually created a... Uh, I've saved seven different copies of this fish to show the progression of how you start all the way through the end point of it. We're going to open up part one, fish model part one. And really there's no model in there. And What there is is uh, just some planes with some textures on it. Now this is a, a simple drawing of the fish, kind of give us a rough idea of the shape. And what we have here is we have the front view the top view and a left view of the fish. If I go into perspective, notice how I've mapped these drawings onto just simple planes and grouped those planes into a group so they're all pretty much locked in place. So it makes it much easier to model when we have this reference drawing. As with most things, we're probably going to start with a box. So I'm going to go into the front view select box and I'm going to start with the tail because actually we're just going to start by making the body and then we'll make the tail later we'll make the fins later so really we just want to get this mass defined out first so I'm going to go ahead and create a box I'm going to tweak this a little bit later I don't know how deep it's going to be but I want it to have I'm going to turn on edged faces here I want it to have approximately seven or eight length segments and three height and width segments. So you're going to have something that looks similar to this. Now the amount of detail you use to start with really is kind of important. So you, you want to make sure you have enough detail to work with but not so much detail that you're spending all your time adjusting uh, vertices and that sort of thing. You really want to kind of keep it kind of a balance between as, as little as you as you need to get the job done. Now I'm going to go ahead and position this box. Now this is a point where we really want to start using uh, a very handy tool. We're going to go into properties and I'm going to click on see through. That allows me to see through this box and as I model it. If I can select that. Okay, select the box. And I'm turning on edged faces on all of these so I can actually see the wires of the box. Now here's a good point where you, you want to lock your selection. Right here we have what's called a selection lock toggle. And if you hit the space bar, what it does is it actually forces your selection to be locked. So when I select the box, I lock the selection. I can't unselect the box. I just stuck on it and I don't have to worry about selecting these pictures behind it. So I'm going to position this box as close to centered as possible. In fact, I'm going to do something here that we haven't done before. We're going to go over to our hierarchy and we're going to actually move our pivot point. So I'm going to go to the hierarchy panel, go effect pivot only, and I'm going to center the pivot of the box to the box. So I hit center to object, and now that pivot is actually at the exact middle of the box. Go back over to my modify panel so I can tweak my box. I'm going to go ahead and center that as much as I can. I'm going to make the width and the length 
again I need to center this that's pretty close we're gonna go ahead and tweak this anyways so just as long as it's approximately the correct size I'm gonna start on the front view part and what we want to do is block out the shape of this fish and uh, we're gonna start with uh, one of these. In fact, I, I'm actually going to start on the left view because what I want to do is get the cylindrical shape of the fish before we start tweaking the rest of the body. So what I want to do is convert this to an editable poly. And as we work, now you can actually do this as an edit mesh as well. We're not... Now what we have to do once we're in here, we have to untoggle our selection hold here. So now I want to move this up. Basically what we're trying to do is just match the outside. And in fact what I'm going to do here is when I'm working on right and left I'm actually going to use scale so that way it's it's as equidistant as possible. So that way we, we've got this as symmetrical as we as we can make it. Now we kind of have the shape of the fish roughed out. Now we need to start working on the front view. At this point you might want to save it, but uh, we're going to throw caution to the wind here and just continue to tweak these vertices. Now what I'm trying to do here, think about this. This is his body, and this along here is going to be the top edge of his body. And everything else is going to be pretty equidistant. So let's, in fact, you this might be a good place to uh, to start using soft selection if you want. I'm not going to do it here. But again, what you're trying to do is get this to be fairly fairly equidistant. Um, these lines here. We want these lines to kind of flow naturally as we're as we're editing this. That needs to come down a little bit. And what we're trying to do is just match the contour of the body. So just continue to tweak. Now this is where you really get into a little bit of the tedium of modeling, but uh, now I one thing I, I need to plan for is this eye. So what I'm going to do is pull these points. In fact, I'm going to I'm doing this a little bit off. Actually, I'm going to pull these forward. What we're trying to do is here is make the the nose. So I'm going to scale this down. So scale's great for moving things evenly. But I'm trying to get somewhat of a square around where the eye is. Now this nose here, we're going to do a little trick here with the nose. Actually I'm going to just do that much of it. And I'm going to go over here. And I'm just going to grab this face. And I'm going to push that forward. And by pushing it forward, in fact let me show you this in perspective view. By pushing it forward, I'm actually kind of making that snout kind of more triangular, which is what we're going to need when we go to the top view anyways. 
that's a little trick that we can 